Last time around we take you out one more time on Lake Winnipeg in Manitoba, Canada, but this time on a Bayfield 25. Uh, here is the lake as a total, so it's the southern basin, then the islands of Heckler and Grindstone National Park that we sailed in and within between last time around when we moored our Irvin 25 up here at Gull Harbor. And then there's the Narrows and then there's a the mighty northern basin of Lake Winnipeg. Now, this time around, we would be at Silver Harbor Marine Resort, which is a really beautiful place, very protected, and that's right here. So as you can see, here's a, here are the jetties, the, the harbor entrance, and then there's a little uh, fishing outfit. And uh, coming down here, you enter the marina. Going to the right in here, there's a lift to haul out boats. And um, going down further into this area here, there's a service dock down here, and we had our boat moored right here. So coming out of here, is a lot to explore. Our sailing this time around will take place all in the middle of the southern basin. Going a little bit further south, mention, or worth mentioning would be also Gimli, which is the, the Icelandic capital of Canada. So it's a big Icelandic population that settled here and they have also a decent sized marina and even a yacht club. So that's down here and also the Gimli Viking statue. Really cool place. We'll show you a little bit of footage later from that. So that is uh, our playground for today's episode on the Bayfield 25. Okay, sailing live at Gimli at the Viking Park and behind me you guys can see the big statue from the Viking King. So, <laughs> I don't know. Makes you feel very small, right? Yes, I'm very little. <laughs> big Viking.
Let's talk a little bit about her sailing characteristics. The Bayfield 25 sails stiff with little healing and somewhat of a corky motion due to her flat cheeks, relatively wide beam and short waterline. Because of that it takes a fair breeze to get up to hull speed of about 6 knots. However, she sails well in relatively high winds though, with a second reef in and a small jib or storm sail. One can take great comfort in her key design, catching a fishing cable or running aground, knowing the rudder is keel mounted and the propeller well protected within between. The boat is well balanced and because of its long shoal keel it likes to sail straight. Credited to a cutaway forefoot, she is yet very maneuverable moving forward under engine in tight places. Backing up however, like let's say coming backwards out of a slip, she goes into the direction of a prop wash no matter what you do. As any sailboat design is a compromise, so is a Bayfield 25. I personally think that she might not be the ideal choice for a passage maker or a club racer, but as a super compact trailable pocket cruiser however, that can get into almost any anchorage and offers an astonishing amount of living space below deck for her size, she is very hard to beat. Alright, here we are, well that's Silver Creek Marina. Silver Harbor? Yeah. Right. Silver Harbor. Do we? Do we have actually a name for our boat? I forgot the name. Yeah. Hello, sailor. Hey, man, it's cold out. Huh? Morning. Holy morning. Alrighty. So here she is. That is. That's all Bayfield 25. So it's a really cool boat, perfect trailer sailor. Well, freak the thing, it's, it's the ideal trailer sailor because it has less than three feet draft, it has a long full keel, which makes it easy to heave to. She got a diesel engine and uh, actually standing headroom in the boat, which is really cool and hard to find uh, in a boat of this size because she's only um, 25, 25 feet. feet. Yeah, but actually less than that by the hull, I think, because the bowsprit, she has a clipper bow, and that takes about a feet at least, I think, so she's more like a 24 footer, I guess you could say. Well, anyhow, it's a real beauty, and it's a Canadian classic. She is a long keel sailboat with a cutaway forefoot, and the rudder is part of the keel, the prop is protected between keel and rudder. She is rigged as a masthead sloop 
and the hull deck joint is through bolted with machine screws and glued together with a putty so very strong hull deck joint and uh, also very strong uh, construction of the hull made from fiberglass with encapsulated ballast out of lead. She was built from 1975 to 1984 by Bayfield Boatyard in Bayfield, Ontario. Designer Ted Gossard. The boat lengths overall 25 feet, although um, the hull is actually more like 23.5 feet long and then you have uh, 1.5 foot long uh, clipper bow, bow spread, which is the reason why she was first introduced in 1975 as a Bayfield 23. Uh, the waterline not quite 20 feet long and a beam of 8 feet, sail area 240 square foot standard and a draft of less than 3 feet. Displacement only 3,500 pounds, which is one of the reasons why she's so popular as a trailer yacht, because you can trailer around with almost any medium-sized truck. The ballast, uh, 1,300 pounds, and uh, that brings up to a ballast displacement ratio of uh, 37%, which is almost ideal for a little cruising sailboat, so you can load up a little bit more. Sail area to displacement of almost 17, so she has a decent amount of uh, canvas to display to get her going. Displacement to lengths 205.31, and uh, now the drawbacks of, like any design, is a compromise. Comfort ratio because of the short waterline and wide beam, not even 16, and capsize screening formula would be 2.11. So Anything under two would be considered self-rightening. Um, anything significantly over two would, uh, there's a chance that she might remain turtled in case of a knockdown. But I mean, who knows? That's, that's all debatable. So cockpit relatively short in comparison to the entire space of the boat. You have decent space uh, underneath the bunks in the cockpit here in the cockpit lockers very high combing feels very protective so that's super nice Ted Gossard made sure you had a lot of uh, room available below deck however there's not really a bridge deck that's that's not there so if you're concerned about breaking waves over the cockpit I suggest leave a board in to be extra safe stepping stepping down into the salon um, you, you will have about six feet standing headroom and um, the table sits four easily in comfort and folds up against the bulkhead. To starboard, you have a little galley. Ours was designed in a way that we had here two burner alcohol stove and a sink. And then our icebox was situated uh, underneath the starboard bunk, which also extends uh, forward underneath the vanity. So you have plenty of space for two grown-ups to sleep in the salon area. And then moving forward in the boat, you have to port side your head and to starboard that little vanity like I mentioned before. And if you close um, the salon door and the Vibos door, it creates like a really decent sized bathroom area. And then moving forward, standard Vibos up front and a nice little anchor locker. Uh, she's a Bayfield uh, 25 from 19, um, 1978. So uh, it's a beautiful little boat. We have the sails off right now and everything hung up here behind the door. You find a little vanity and here's the head. We have here a porta potty in here right now. And then you got a V burst up front, some storage. She has a nice hatch on top. So it's actually not too bad. I have the sails back up, the sails backs up there right now in front. And then can fold this up and then you have a full size burst underneath which is really awesome to have and behind this little door here is another compartment that we use right now for we have the uh, the tiller pilot in there and we have a battery in there and the battery master switch so there's also another <coughs> compartment oh, yeah, I need to redo this here it's not closing properly I need to uh, there we are. I need to basically rebuild this. And um, yeah, we have here a diesel engine and a little ice box and such. So 
I carry on with the tour. So if you if you look from the other side, here's a burst that basically extends underneath the vanity or sink of the bathroom or however you want to call that. And this version had a mini teeny tiny ice box. So by all means it's not a big ice box. But um, we'll see how far we can arrange ourselves around that. And here, that is actually really neat. You got a pressurized alcohol. It doesn't fix the world, but it fixed some of the, the issues. Also, I took the tiller off. I want to do, uh, um, basically, I want to repaint that. It was probably done with some something like schooner gold or so. It's actually a nice tiller. It's not bad. Also, got the hook up here for the autopilot. We have a little. Um, what is it now? It's 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 a like a tiller pilot, a really old one, but it works. We had it out the other day, and it steers the boat just perfect. It really works. So I really would like to keep this and see the the paint is chipping off. I would say it looks like it looks like schooner gold or something like that. So I will send it all down and make that also one of the winter projects over the long and cold winter out here in, in uh, Winnipeg. The Bayfield 25, so it has the diesel tank in the bilge. It's a great, it's a great boat. Bayfields are Canadian, um, real Canadian craftsmanship. The great uh, little pocket cruisers, so especially the 25 is. I mean, if you talk about co pocket cruiser, my opinion is probably as good as it gets. You know, you can you can trailer the boat. You you have almost any headroom. Not quite. I'm six foot tall, so I can almost stand upright in here. Almost. You have everything in here that you can imagine. Like you can sleep four people here, and uh, you have a, a, a head, and you have a little galley and nice box, even an inboard diesel engine, which is also something very unique for a boat of that size. So it's a, it's a great it's a great little package. It's out of the water and pickled for the winter. So we winterized the engine. All the cells are off, and uh, we hung everything up here in the cabin. Uh, it is actually like sitting in your own fridge, I guess, or even... Absolutely, it's so cold, it's like minus 10 Celsius. Yeah, easily. So we'll, we'll show you how cold that really is down below here, but in Fahrenheit, I mean. Um, so, if you had a good time, please give us a like. Or subscribe to our channel. Yeah, or you can also leave some comments below. And um, we like to create on our own terms, right? So that's what we said. and. If you uh, want to help us to make more videos, you can also become a patron and uh, basically help with your pledge uh, to contribute to further footage here. Um, yeah, that's that's it for this time around, right? Yeah, we'll see you guys soon. All right, thanks. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Our initial plan was to fix her up over the long and cold winter and get her ready for next spring. Well, I guess life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. It turned out we had to move again and were kind of forced to put it up for sale. Although it was just the beginning of winter, she drew a lot of interest and was sold within less than two weeks. And that was not much of a surprise. She is a really good old boat after all. Sailing good old boats.